you you say that this letter was long overdue you were expecting it so does this mean that you do accept the reasons given for this dismissal looking at the 10 working days that you missed as a doctor also including the legality around this whole goal slow and the procedures that were expected of you that weren't met so does this mean that you do understand or your understanding of the reasons given for this dismissal firstly the reasons given are false we all know that the reasons which are uh, real are just to try and uh, silence uh, silence me and uh, you know all the cause we are fighting for for the doctors those days written there they are all false and um, we need to make mention here that uh, everything that's going on apart from the letter today i'm supposed to report at police are you telling me that uh, all of a sudden I've become a criminal, I've been dismissed, my license has been uh, you know, suspended, everything happening at once? This is not a coincidence. So what you're saying Ever is... since we started uh, fighting for the plight of... So what you're yes, saying, you Dr. Say. You can, you Sampa, can is that you are denying that you've not missed 10 working days, you are denying that you did not follow the legal procedure that the Ministry of Labor, Labor rather, has been advocating for and cons consistently and persistently talking about? I have never missed work. I don't have a history of missing work, neither do I have uh, any disciplinary cases involving missing work. So whatever is happening right now, all these are just cooked up things, uh, trying to find faults. As we speak, even today, we don't know what they have cooked at the police because I'm supposed to report at force headquarters at nine hours. On top of the issue of you say you didn't miss those 10 working days, you've not missed work. On top of that is the issue of the legality around it, because according to the Ministry of Labor, the expectation is at least since you are not unionized as doctors, what you have done is follow the legal procedure, go through the courts of law, and then let the courts of law decide what the fate should be for the doctors. And if that is not met, then now, you can go on and find other means, other legal means as well. But with that procedure not being followed, there's still the aspect of you going ahead with this illegally and inciting fellow doctors. Well, what we have to understand is that uh, when I'm talking like this, I'm not talking as Sampa. Uh, I'm talking as a resident doctor, as a senior president. And that means I'm speaking for the office. And every decision that is made doesn't directly, uh, you know, have a bearing on me. There are so many times when you are, you know, a leader of an association, organization, when even your personal, your personal, you know, uh, bearings don't matter. What matters is what the people want. We just speak for the doctors and even the decisions that were made were not decisions made by an individual. And everyone understands that. But the issue of trying to target the leaders so as to silence, just like what happened to our Secretary General was arrested. Uh, it's something which is unacceptable, but we shall continue fighting, and we are not going to win. Speaking of fighting, are you doing this diplomatically? In other words, has the dialogue with government started? Because as of last week, you put your go slow on hold, and you did mention that after two weeks, as the Resident Doctors Association, you will review the two weeks and see whether or not you go ahead with the go slow or not. How has this been going so far? Have you managed to have any dialogue or engage government so far? So on Monday, we wrote a letter which was sent to the Minister of Health. And uh, in that letter, we notified them of our decision and how we wanted to be back on the, you know, the, negotiation, ta the negotiation table. Because if you remember, the reasons we gave were not because our needs were met, but it was because of the rising COVID cases. So we decided, okay, let's put on hold. Uh, let's put it on hold for two weeks. But uh, instead of the government responding by answering to our call for negotiation, they have continued with this intimidation, uh, you know, invo involving the police, the dismissals, and we don't know what else they have in stock, which is not a good thing because how do we negotiate with other people being victimized? As we stand, uh, as we speak right now, there's nothing really going on in terms of negotiation. We haven't received anything. The only news we are getting is the news of dismissal and other things. The, the, the court route was going to be very long and we are talking about uh, emergency issues here. There is COVID-19 third wave, which is already here. And these doctors haven't been given anything. Remember last year they were promised there will be incentives which were not given, so many other things. But here they're just asking for things which they have worked for already. 
they felt if we are going to use the, the, the route of going to the courts, it may take forever and uh, some people may not have to live to realize the benefits of that. With that said, as Dr. Brian Sampa, with the dismissal that we have a copy of the letter in this case, you being dismissed, if the government decides to have at least their needs being met significantly for the doctors, you still remaining dismissed, what would be the way forward for Dr. Brian Sampa as an individual if doctors are catered for in this case? At this point, I want to make one thing clear that uh, our fight is not supposed to be about uh, personal gains. And uh, losing a job can be compared to many people getting paid, uh, doctors getting employed. If the government is able to meet all those demands, the job is okay, let it go. But uh, what we need is not just attacks without uh, fulfilling what they're supposed to do.